Now that we understand speed, average speed, average velocity, I want to take a few minutes and talk about a position versus time graph. So when somebody walks, for example, uh, and you plot their position versus time, there's a lot of information you can gain. For example, you can learn about their speed or their velocity, their initial position, and we're going to look at when you walk slow, when you walk fast, when you walk in the reverse or opposite direction, and when you're still. So for this example, we're going to assume that we're limited to basically a number line. Zero is going to be the reference point. Positive numbers are going to be to the right, and negative numbers are going to be to the left. To help us do this, we're going to look at uh, a FET, that's P-H-E-T, if you want to Google it, simulation from the University of Colorado. And this allows you to take this walking man, and you can start him wherever you want. I'm going to start him at negative 10 meters. And I'm going to give him an initial velocity of uh, 5 meters per second. And we're going to assume that he is not accelerating. And I'm going to make sure the sound's off. And I'm going to record and see what that motion looks like on a position time graph. Before I hit this button, you may want to think about what is the position time graph going to look like? Is it going to be going up, going down, horizontal? Will it be curving? Will it be straight? There he goes walking at a constant speed. If you notice his position time graph starts at an initial position of negative 10 meters. We can learn that from the y-intercept of this position time graph. And you can tell from the fact that this line is going up that his position is getting more and more and more positive each, section, each second. So the change in motion is positive. That means it's going to be a positive velocity. Notice the velocity we picked was 5 meters per second. So the slope of this line represents the change in the y, in this case the change in position. So it went from a final position, or went to a final position of 10 meters from a position of minus 10 meters. That's a change of plus 20 meters. And it did that over a period of 4 seconds. A plus 20 divided by 4 seconds gives you a velocity of 5 meters per second. That's exactly what we plugged in. So if I wanted to show you that, we can calculate that. So again, looking over here, you would say your final position, your x final, or final position is plus 10 meters. Your initial position xi was minus 10 meters. Displacement, by definition, this change in position, that's going to be your final minus your initial, is going to be 10 meters minus negative 10 meters, which is going to be plus 20 meters. Your average velocity is that displacement divided by the time. So that's going to be plus 20 meters divided by, in this case, 4 seconds. And that's going to be 5 meters per second. So the velocity is consistent. Also, this minus 10 is going to tell us the initial position. So from a DT graph, there are two things we look at. We look at the slope, which tells us the average velocity, in this case 5 meters per second. And we look at the y-intercept, in this case minus 10 meters, which tells us where you were standing when the time was zero. Those are the two things we can learn from position time graphs. While not the focus of this lesson, as long as we have the VT graph here, you can see the slope is not changing. If I was to look at the slope right here, the instantaneous velocity at this point, it's the same as the slope of the overall line, plus 5. That would give you a value of the velocity of plus 5 meters per second. If you were to look in the middle part, the slope of this line, of this DT graph, or XD graph, depending on your choice of variable, is going to be the same, plus 5. So I look at the VT graph, and the value of VT is plus 5. And at the end, the slope is still plus 5. That tells you it's a horizontal line on a VT graph, or a, a velocity versus time graph. Talk more about that another time. 
So what happens if I was to change the velocity? So if I reset this, get rid of that. And we're still going to start at the beginning, so I'll make this minus 10 meters. But now I'm going to make that velocity instead of 5, what if I make it 10? How do you think that's going to change the position time graph, the DT graph? So let's see what he does. Clearly he's going faster. You saw him go faster, and as a result, the line is changing here. Again, if you look at the graph, something's the same. That thing that's the same here is the y-intercept. That's your initial position, and that is still negative 10 meters. But if you look at the slope, the velocity is still going to be your displacement over your time, but now your displacement is twice as much. Now you're just, or I should say your time is half as much to get to the same displacement the way you're looking at this graph. So that's going to be 20 meters divided by now only two seconds, which is going to give you a velocity of 10 meters per second, twice as fast as before. Now we have a, a, the motion man set all the way to the right, and we're going to give him a negative velocity, meaning moving to the left. What do you think that's going to change about this position versus time graph? Will it still be a straight line? Will it be sloped up, sloped down, straight? As you can see, two things are different. One, I started it at positive 10 meters to the right. So that initial position is different, so 10 meters. And also, when you look at the slope of this position versus time graph, your displacement is now negative. Your displacement is now going to be a final position of negative 10 meters minus your initial position of 10, or negative 20 meters. Your average velocity is going to be that displacement over the time, which is going to give you negative 20 meters divided by 4 seconds, or it's going to give you a velocity of negative 5 meters per second. Again, as long as we have the VT graph here, let's take a look at this. The slope at this point right here, if I was to draw a little line and take a, the instantaneous velocity at that point, meaning if I was to draw a little tangent line right at that moment and take the slope of that, I would get the same slope as this line. I would get negative 5. So the value of the velocity, that's how you get it on a VT graph, is you think of what's the velocity at that point, what's the value of my VT graph going to be, minus 5. In the middle, there's a tendency for rookies to say, oh, it's 0. Well, something is zero. The it that's zero at that point is your position. But what we're interested in to get the velocity is the slope. So the instantaneous velocity at this point right here, same as the slope of the overall line, is still minus 5. And again, at the end, the velocity is minus 5. That's what tells you that this is going to be a horizontal velocity. It's going to be a constant velocity, and it's going to be negative. It's going to be below the zero. Now we're going to look at what happens if uh, we have our man stand still. We're going to give him an initial position of 5 meters. And of course his velocity is going to be 0 if you're standing still, not moving to the left or moving to the right. And we'll see what happens. Perhaps not the most interesting walk ever. Probably not the biggest surprise in the world. When you look at the slope here, the slope, which tells you the average velocity, is zero. Your displacement is zero, so your average velocity is zero. If you were to translate that to a velocity time graph, slope is zero, slope is zero, slope is zero, value of the velocity is zero, value of the velocity is zero, value of the velocity is zero. So that's what it looks like for someone who's standing still. So here we have the four motions shown side by side. Which one of these do you think represents the fastest motion? This is going to be fast. It's going to be fast and it's going to be in the positive direction. Which of these represents the slowest velocity?
or slowest speed? That would be this one. You're standing still. Which of these would represent traveling in the reverse direction, meaning to the left or backwards from the reference point? That would be this one. And this last one is going to represent going in the positive direction and slow. So this is going to be slow in the positive direction, whereas this was the reverse or the negative direction. So once again, when you're looking at position versus time graphs, there are two attributes you're really interested in. One attribute you're really interested in is this point right here, the y-intercept. And that is going to tell you the initial position. And the other attribute you're really interested in is the slope of the dt graph. And the slope of a dt or position time graph or xt time graph is going to tell you the velocity. Then if you need to draw a vt graph, what you're going to do is you're going to take the slope at three points. If necessary, make up a number. In this case, plus 10. Here it's plus 10, it being the slope of the dt graph. Here it's plus 10. So that means the value stays plus 10. That's how you're going to draw a vt graph. So these are the motion graphs for a constant velocity, and that is how you interpret. So I'll show you one more little thing, spreadsheet I made to show you. All of these are going to have an acceleration of zero because this is constant velocity. So if you had a velocity of 5 meters per second and you started at zero meters, what would the graph look like? It should be a straight line rising up to the right with a slope of plus 5 and an initial position of zero meters. What if you then traveled at 10 meters per second twice as quickly? what would change about the graph? Well, the slope would change. The slope would get exactly twice as big. It would have a value for the slope of 10 meters per second. What if you then decided you were going to go to the left at 10 meters per second? What would that position time graph look like? As you can see, it would have the same magnitude of slope as before. 10 meters per second, but it would now be going down and to the right, meaning a negative change in position, a negative velocity. You're now moving to the left at a constant speed. Which of these three sections are you going the fastest? Well, the slope of this is 5, the slope of this is 5, and the uh, slope of this is 10, and the slope of this is minus 10. So these two would be traveling the same speed, even though they would be traveling in different directions. And finally, what would your position time graph look like if you were stopped, if you were at rest? Then it would be a horizontal line on the position time graph right here. Uh, slope would be zero because the velocity would be zero. Now, if you want to make a VT graph, as long as we have it up here, the slope of this line along all parts of this segment from zero to five seconds is the same as the slope of this whole segment. In other words, it's five. So the velocity is going to have a value of 5 that whole time from 0 to 5 seconds. At 5 seconds, it jumps up to a slope of 10 meters per second and stays that constant slope, 10 meters per second, all the way from 5 to 10 seconds. That's why you get a horizontal line on the VT time graph. Between 10 and 15 seconds, you have a negative slope, negative 10 meters per second to be precise. That's going to make this velocity time graph jump down to a value of minus 10. So when you're going back and forth between dt and vt graphs, on a dt graph velocity is the slope and on a vt graph velocity is the value, in this case minus 10 meters per second. And then once you hit 15 seconds the slope is zero, the value is zero. When you're looking at vt graphs there's going to be a tendency to say, oh this is a zero velocity. It's not. It's a constant velocity, in this case of 10.
So you've got to be really careful about that. So once we get to velocity time graphs and we interpret those, slopes and y-intercepts are going to mean something completely different on the VT graph than on the position time graph. So those of you that didn't see me in class know I do my little dance. DT is not equal to VT. So think very carefully about which kind of graph you're looking at when you're interpreting the meanings of the slopes and the y-intercepts.